die once and for a deep, comfortable, relaxed state. Deep, comfortable, relaxed state. So pay attention to my voice that you remain asleep, to remain in a comfortable, sleepy state. Tell me, how do you feel now? Sleep. Yes. Very warm? Yes. What I want you to do is to work with me in finding how that you're able to go back in time. If you go back in time, you actually are going to be back at a younger age. When did you birthday? that? June 13th, 1945. We're going to go back to June 13th, 1985. June 13th, 1985. You can see very vividly where you are on June 13th, 1985. Very vividly. You can visualize the scene very clear. Tell me, where are you now? Hmm. In my house. Who else is there? And is there Andrew made me a cake? That's what a cake is. Oh. You see the cake? Yeah. I didn't like it then, and I still don't know exactly what it was. Did you like the cake? Yeah. The one children? No, it's a white cake of some kind. It has, uh... White icing. It's unexpectedly... It's a thick cake. It has white icing. Can you taste it? It's sweet and... Uh, I can't really taste it. Okay, now I want you to relax again. Relax and sit. Relax and sit. Relax and sit. Relax and sit. I'm going to take you a little forward. It's, like it's Labor Day, 1985. Mm. It's Labor Day. Where are you? We're at the pool. Oh. That's sort of in my back. You're sitting I can see the whole thing. Andrew's Big rubber raft. <laughs> We're having a real nice time. I'm swimming. It's a beautiful day. Can you feel the sun? Yeah. It's very it's warm. The water's pretty warm. I've got the hot tub to go in, the pool going the first time, really, almost, since it's been built. Now, we're going forward a little further. The beginning of my back photo. Going back to the beginning of my back photo. Right around October 1st, 1985. Can you tell me where you are right now? Yeah, I'm working on the Russian book. Which book? The Russian book. The Russian book. What's that about? There's a novel about Russia. It's called The Blood Eagle. I've got a... I've got a good idea. I'm working on the Russian book. Where are you now? I'm at home in the city. Do you have any plans for the weekend? 
Yeah, we're going to take Jack and Annie out to the country, and I don't know whether or not Jack's going to fit in the damn Jeep. Who's Jack? Jack is a friend, and Annie is his girlfriend. Annie Gottlieb is... I like Annie, and... Uh, She's put me in one of her books. She's a very brilliant woman. I'm very proud to be in that book. What's the book about? It's about the people who came out of the 60s generation. I want you to go forward to your driving up in the country. Yeah. Energy? Yeah. It's a Jeep Wagoneer. We're not having any problems. Annie's very small, so Jacques is, is in the, he's in the back seat, and Andrew's happy because he likes Jacques a lot. I put on a tape, but nobody liked it. Uh, so we talk. I'm going to take y'all out to dinner tonight. Uh, it's weird. Too late to st stop for the groceries. We're gonna go to. We'll go to the. You want to go to the top of the falls? Uh, uh, we had a lot of trouble deciding about that. All right. I didn't remember that, but then we went to the top of the falls. Now you're at the top of the floor. Yeah. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm enjoying myself thoroughly. So is everybody except Jacques. And he's a Romanian with funny ideas about food, and there's nothing here for him. He's got a pour over that menu. Jacques, I'm sorry I brought you here. I didn't. Uh, I feel embarrassed. I mean, I'm going to pay a lot of money for this meal, and he's very unhappy. How far is the your home? Oh, not long. It's about 15 minutes. And we, uh, we have dinner. We have dinner. And he, and Andrew all have a, I have a great time. Jacques finally has a good time. I think it, it was a smart idea on the part of the waitress to give him a big drink. So he's getting feeling better type of person for a fancy restaurant. I'll have to take him to a simpler place in the future. Okay, I want you to go forward now to your back in your house. Yeah. And you're going up to bed for the night. Yeah. I'm wearing my house shoes. We all sat in a hot tub. I'm tired. God, I wish I hadn't spent all that money on that restaurant. Yeah. You know, Jacques is a, sometimes he pisses me off. Tell me about what happens after you go to bed. Oh. Well, oh, I woke up in the middle of the night. Understand that. So, there's a there's something went past the window. Well, what the hell? Something went past the window. Well, something went past the window. Something. Can you see it? I don't have to I think they...
know it was a light. It didn't go past the window. It couldn't have gone past the window. I'm going back to sleep. I think the stove's okay. There was a light in the front yard. I keep thinking, who the hell is that? Is that somebody? Is there somebody? You know, I'm looking at this thing. I don't think... I don't think I like that. I saw something that looked like it had a hood on it, standing over by the wall near the corner in our bedroom. And I don't want it to be there. I don't want it to be there. I didn't know there was anything in my house until just the second that night, the 4th of October. like a little man with a hood on or something. It looks almost uh, like this. You know, there's no head. He's, he's just covered in something. And he comes over to the bed and he starts like sticking something in, not into my head, you understand, but like it was sticking into my mind and it would, it would go in and it would make a noise, like a voice. It was terrible. It's <laughs> Like that, going into me. It was just god awful horrifying. <sighs> he was standing there doing that. Was 
You know, I can't, I can't, I'd have to be hypnotized again if I could ever find out what that thing was saying. It was something that was being said inside me. Like it was, like he had a little thing that he would touch to my head and it would make a voice. That's what I think it was. Christ, that's scary. But the happened to you, you weren't shouting then. I was shouting, no. I were, I was, yeah. I have absolutely no idea why the other people had didn't remember it, because I'm damn sure I was shouting. I don't see her, because I'm turned towards the thing. Am I, am I still hypnotized? No. Okay. Because I swear to God, I just can't believe that this happened. But it did happen. I'll tell you, the light comes down past the window. Then I see a glow in the front yard. I thought I had gotten up, but I don't think now that I did. I thought I had seen the glow against the roof of the living room, but I don't think I did. I think I knew all along it was coming in the window, the glow, and I just didn't somehow want to say that. Because it was very obvious, even then, that it wasn't a fire. And he was, I just don't know what he's doing. And I'll be frank with y'all. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't, I just can't figure it out. I don't know what it was, but it was very scary. And he wasn't, he was wearing a, sh a covering, like he had a cover on. Oh, I'm shaky. Yeah. You know, I can't understand it. I guess, of course, I understand how I experienced it. I think it'd be so scared. But, uh... Do you want to keep on? I do, definitely. I mean, I've... I think I may have gotten right at the beginning through the worst part of the few, frankly, because whatever it was, when it first came to me that night, it was ultimately terrifying. It almost always happens at the beginning. Like this, the beginning moment is a scary trip. Yeah. And after that, you can be calm. Okay. Okay. Was I a bit hypnotic subject? Yeah. Good. It didn't seem to take very long. It felt very nice. I was. Yeah. Yeah. I was amazed at you because, uh, you know, you started. I thought you were, like, explaining to me how it was going to be done, and the next thing I knew. I was thinking I can't keep my eyes open. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. It's very simple because once you get the hang of it, you just, you just yeah. go like that. Just pick it up again. And you can feel the same thing coming back. You just feel the happiness. The eyes fall. Um, Sticking into a deep, restful state. Deep, restful, restful. restful.
open up. We've woken up now. And the light, and if it's true, there's something in the room with you. It's dark. It's dark. Tell me what's wrong. When he sees I see him, comes over to the bed. He looks mean and little. He goes up to about the top of the lamp. He's looking down at me. He's got eyes on him. Big eyes. He's slanted eyes and a bald head. He's looking down at me. He's got a wheel in his hand and has a tip of silver. No touches. I see pictures. I see pictures of our world just blowing up. I see pictures of the whole place just blowing up. And he touches my head with this thing. <laughs> Jesus. It's a picture of like a whole big blast. And there's a dark red fire in the middle of it. There's a white smoke all around it. That's your home. That's your home. I know why. Don't you like me? Why do you hate me? Who said that? I said that. I mean, why did they just put that thing on me? That it's have the whole world blow it up. That's what I want to know. What this is about? What the hell is it about? I don't know what it's about. What is this going to blow up? What's going to blow up? I know what's going to blow up. I know what's going to blow up. I know it is, too. Oh. Oh. God, it's green now. Shows me a park. I see Andrew. What have they got to do with him? Is this the devil? What the hell is this? Yes, I know you won't hurt me. I know you won't. I know you won't hurt me. The huh. house is on fire. No, it's not. That sounds stupid. <laughs> How did I say that? Explosion. I knew that already. I was expecting it. I knew just when it would come. And he took a little thing like a needle. And stuck it like a match in front of my face, and it made a big bang. Down! And, uh... Then I thought the house was on fire. Was he there when he looked at? I don't know. I don't remember a thing except that. No, I jumped up out of the bed. No, I was already, when I said the house is on fire, I'm already out of the bed. <clears throat> right away. This is the explosion of an animal. I think the explosion that they all heard, yeah. He did it with a little needle. 
He's stuck in the air. Why did he show his energy? I don't know why he showed his energy, to be frank with you. They're the most dreadful images. Did you see it related to the I'll tell you the truth, what I feel. I think he showed me images of the future of our world, is what he showed. It's a beautiful green expanse, and it was immediately relaxing when I saw all that green. And Andrew is in the park. Andrew is there. And it's happy. That's what I saw. <laughs> he's there. I think the park represents death. That he's there because he's dead. I don't know. That's just my impression. It, it's funny. It's not like of the world where the art called down here. I'm told it's the world blowing up. It is a red fire with like horns of smoke shooting out from it in every direction of white smoke. It's a red fire. Big red fierce fire with all these horns of smoke shooting out from it in every direction. And they said that was the world war. And, uh, Christ. I think we've got a monkey on our back. No doubt about that. <clears throat> Other people have been showing this kind of image too. Uh, you know, I feel a tremendous relief right now because I can I can remember this. This is this is good to be able to remember this. It's not an easy memory, but it's good to remember it. Because I've been fighting to keep that out of my head. You know. I do understand. You know, I had a dream uh, back in November of Cleveland blowing up. Then I realized now it was not a dream. It was me remembering this image and saying it was Cleveland blowing up because you know, it was about Cleveland. <laughs> She's trying not to be scared of that image. You said he had a bald head and slanted eyes. Slanted eyes. I would say he had slanted eyes. It was real hard to see because he kept putting this thing on my head. Almost every time I would move, he'd put this thing on my head. And you would see I would see these images, yeah. I thought, it, I thought at first when we talked, the thing was talking. But when you hypnotized me again, I could see the images. And he has this little ruler thing about that long. It's got a silver tip on it, quite silver, because I can see glimmers on it. And it's dark in the room. Did you try to light up the room for me or something when you said the room was light? Because the room was very dark. It was dark, very dark. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, she didn't. I, because I, I also, you know, I also had the impression that he was, he was wearing covering. Like he, uh, and I didn't, I, when I looked, see, the thing that's scary in a way, the thing that scared me at the first was realizing he had been there for some time, standing over there in the corner. And, you know, I have a, feeling about a fierce wish of some kind. I mean, I'm not saying that I was being threatened so much as warned. That was my feeling. There was a very stern warning. Or maybe it wasn't. Maybe it's the images that... It, it, maybe if I had been not afraid of nuclear war and perfectly happy when he touched that thing to my head, other images would have come out. See what I mean? If it's only intersected... My own fears, exactly. Maybe it was a guy making a psychological test of me. Could it be that? I mean, maybe he was literally testing, doing something like as a hypnotist that you might do. With a device, in fact, this little silver object that she's using in place of his finger, your finger. Could that be? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not impossible.
yeah. including that this is some kind of a hallucination, but I don't think so. Yeah, maybe. Uh, the, uh, where, where Right, right, right in my forehead, right, so right, here. The forehead. right here, right here, right, very specifically right here, right here, just about right, like that, like that hard. And every time he touched me, a burst of images came into my head. You had no time really to think the clean images. No. I mean, that no. Sort of this is, this all happened quite quickly. <clears throat> yeah, they were visions. No, I thought they were, mm -mm. Absolutely not. They were pictures. Well, you, you described two. Are you <sighs> no, but the others are so jumbled up, I can't tell what they were. You know, I think increasingly that they might be pictures out of my mind of my worst fears. Like them. A nuclear war and my son being killed. I think and there was something else in there too, it was just all jumbled up. Maybe a fear so terrible that I can't even make heads or tails of it under hypnosis. You said first that it just seemed to be a covered up and that the Yeah, but when it came close to me, I could see its face. You said it had a bald head. Yeah, did I? Well, you see, I can sort of see it in my... I can see it that it had a bald, rather large-ish head for someone that size. And that its eyes are slanted. More than an Oriental's eyes. And they're quite... There's a piercing glare, almost. You know, there's a real... There's a real fierce look to the whole face. I'm not sure... Some, at some point, I thought it almost looked like a bug. But not, you know, I mean, more, more like a person than a bug, but there were bug-like qualities to it. Am I getting myself clear at all? I don't know. The only thing I ever remember reading about this was in Look Magazine years and years ago. The incident, the John Fuller article about the people who were picked up by a UFO. That's all I've read about it, and whether it had pictures drawn in it or not, I just don't know. And what does that book that It doesn't have any pictures drawn in it at all, or any descriptions that I recall of the people the way they looked. I don't think that the uh, unimportant you said you had the pen that doesn't have any pictures. I literally haven't read it. It's, but you know, this culture, I mean, we've got so much media around. Yeah. It's possible I saw something. But, I'm, but, this is, but I don't think so, because the thing is that this is so damn real. It just seems impossible to me that it could be an image that I, that I picked up from something. Yeah, so but maybe the drawings were right. You know, I mean, that's possible, too. <laughs> Yeah, uh, 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 that's possible too. Okay. No, I don't want to check out at any point. I'm determined to go through with this. And it's, it's seen now that it should be more, because this obviously is the... It's obvious that this happened to me. And uh, I, I, I would be highly irresponsible for myself not to continue. I don't know. It's not a question of being a hero. It's a much simpler question of not wanting me to walk out before you move me. I'm going to 
burst into flames like a like a little ball of gasoline out in the middle of the sky. And all these smoke things start shooting off of it. Like great horns made out of smoke, hundreds of them. And we're all there, down there in the red fire. Then I see that thing on my head and it's gone. Picked it up off my head. Now I'm scared of it. Oh, now I see a park. My little boy is sitting. He's all wobbly and like he can't move his arms right. He's all wobbly. His eyes look funny. I gotta go over and pick him up and help him. Because if I don't help him, he's gonna die. I miss you, Daddy. I miss you, Daddy. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, yes. yes, damn well did. It's a picture of my dad lying on a couch going 
like that, gasping, jerking forward. And my mother's sitting in a chair, just watching me like this. And it dies. Yeah, that I don't know. That's not the story she told. Maybe it's something I suspect might have happened. I don't know. No, they had their ups and downs in their marriage, but they were married for nearly 50 years. And I didn't think she was uncaring about him at the end. Though during the middle of their marriage, it was very hard for him. So you feel these thoughts, maybe, were your thoughts? They were my thoughts. They are definitely my thoughts. I mean, sure as hell wasn't his father. <laughs> he's pulling this out of my head. It's what he's pulling it out of my mind. He's pulling things like my fear. Perhaps there's a... Suspicion. Well, first of all, when I saw that picture, I felt an agony because I never felt like I got close to my father. Like, my dad was distant. He wasn't, he was a loving father, but he, but he, he always held something back, you know. He was from a very reticent generation. A Texan, rural Texans growing up in the 20s and 30s were very, in, in, inside, inward people. And you, and uh, I guess I feel a little bit of guilt about that. Or something. You know, I don't know what to make of all of this. But do you suppose this... I just don't know what to make of it. I don't know what to make of it. I mean, it's... it's, 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 it's I just don't, it's so unexpected. I mean, this is the last thing I would have thought would have come out of me. And what's weird about it is, why would someone come for a foreign saucer and evoke that kind of impression in me? What possible reason would they have? Well, that's not to find out now. I mean, that's down, that's speculation down the road. It's like they're trying to see how I ticked. It really is like that. Unless it's simply that I've come to a time in my life when... There's some very difficult and terrifying material that I've got to face, and this is the way I'm facing it. And there was no little man there. But, you know, I say that, and I'm telling you right now, it's just not true. It's just not true. It's, it's incredible, but it's not true. The man was there. He was standing beside my bed as real as life. Well, you told me originally about the 26th episode that you could remember that you were standing your own ego, you know, control this. Yeah. You said it was as if they said to you, what is your deepest secret? You would have just told them right away. Right away, you yeah. Without any thought or without any ability to turn it or twist it or modify it or anything, you just had no will at that point. And it sounds like that... Is this is what... It's, it's, it's this too. So that's what this has all been about. It's been... It's right. been but you had an inkling of, of something that you were being... Yeah. The deepest things were coming out. I didn't have any inkling about this at all. I didn't know until today that this had even happened. Yeah. Any of it. Well, that, yeah, that's, that's what I mean. That's how this is. Well, obviously, I knew, because it's, <laughs> the memories are intact, and they just came out of my head, right? But, uh, boy, if you had asked me consciously, I would have said I have absolutely no idea what happened during that hour. If it wasn't that. And the explosion seemed right in front of you. It took a little thing, like a stick, a uh, uh, needle. And when you moved it even slightly in the air, I could see it spark at the end. Hmm. It was, uh, and it went like that. And it went, bam! And it sent a tingling all over my face like I'd been slapped on both cheeks and on my forehead. You know, when I asked, uh, when I asked Annie Dudley what she would have to do to duplicate the sound, I said, supposing you were given resources, you'd make the sound. She said, well, it could be if you had a big, heavy door and you push it open as hard as you could and hit the wall behind it, like, like that. That's what she said. Yeah. Um, it was a big noise. Your, your aunt said that it was like an impact uh, of something, hitting something, like that, almost like an explosion. Like yeah. Um, but for me, it was more like a... I can't say it was like a balloon popping, because that's too innocuous a sound. It, was, it had a heavier quality to it than that. Like some big energy had been released. Not that crisp. It was, it, it was more thuddy, but it was... 
Well, you see, it's a very, it's a funny sound because it's not. It is a big noise, and it is a there's a there's a slap in it, but there's also a bang in it. You know, what, can you get what I mean? In other words, it's a there's that's part of it, but there's also a deeper resonance to it. That's where I guess I want to give you an example. But we got four different people to try to come up with the description of the sound. Yeah. Not like thunder. No, it wasn't thunder. No, I mean it wasn't like thunder. No, I not like thunder. Okay, I'm trying to. Well, no, because it didn't last after it. In other words, it was just one. It would be like a clap that ended immediately and had no further, no, just a, a single noise. You know what I mean? But it was a. It, it had a deep undertone to it. Uh, 